This video continues an in-depth look at the suggested panels discussed in Chapter 5, Setting Up Your Workspace with Panels, focusing on the Navigator and History panels. If you're using this video in conjunction with the Photoshop book, we're in Chapter 7, page 17. Let's start with the Navigator panel. As you'll soon discover, there are a zillion reasons why you'll need to magnify your image on your computer screen to check on sharpness, see if your layer mask is accurate, decide cropping, check on digital noise, and so on. But as you can see, this can really make it tough to navigate around your image, particularly at larger magnifications. So there are three ways to navigate around a magnified image, and they're all interconnected as you'll soon see. The first way is using the Navigator panel. If you're setting up your panels as suggested in Chapter 5, you'll find the Navigator in this tab group right here. If it's not on top of the tab group, just click on the tab to make it the active panel. Notice that the magnification of my image is shown numerically in the bottom left of the panel. From within the Navigator panel, there are two ways to enlarge and reduce. The most obvious is to drag the slider left to right, as I'm doing here. A better way is to use the icons at either end of the slider, and it'll automatically snap to the most useful magnifications, such as 25%, 50%, and so on. You'll notice a few things while I'm doing this. That your image enlarges within the confines of the document window, and that a red bounding box shows the part of your image visible in the document window. Once you increase the magnification, simply drag the red box around to the part of the image you want visible. The second way to navigate around your image is with the use of three simple speed key combinations, especially assuming that you set up your general preferences as suggested in Chapter 3 of the book. Control plus, Control minus, and Control zero, or Command instead of Control on a Mac. Control plus magnifies your image, Control minus reduces your image, and Control zero fills your monitor. As you can see, there is one major disadvantage to using the speed keys. Unlike what happens when using the navigator panel, your document window enlarges along with your image. Not a big deal and one that can be partially overcome by a nifty speed key shown in previous videos, the tab key, which hides and reveals all your panels so you can view more of your image. The third way to navigate around your image is to use the hand tool found in the tools panel or another nifty speed key combination holding down the space bar on your keyboard and then your left mouse button, regardless of the active tool. I'll use that speed key combination since I've got the move tool active. First I'll enlarge to 100% using the navigator panel icon on the right hand side. And I will hover my mouse over the image and you'll see the hand tool icon as I press down on the space bar. Then press and hold down your left mouse button while still holding down the space bar and presto drag where necessary. By the way, you'll see the changes reflected in the red bounding box in the Navigator panel too. Now let's talk about the History panel. The History panel is an excellent way to discover what-if scenarios and or to make instant corrections on your image as you're working on it. Think of it as the rough equivalent of the forward and back buttons on our web browsers. You'll find it here in this tab group if you set up your workspace as suggested. Later on, you'll find that you'll use the History panel frequently in conjunction with the Visibility and Trash icons in the Layers panel discussed in detail in Section 3 of this book. So here's how this works. Every time you perform a function that changes your file, a history state is created, up to 50 by default. In this example, there are about 20 history states, as you can see as I scroll up and down with the most recent history state at the bottom of the list. To go back in history, or to take a step backward, Click on the name of your desired location anywhere above the last entry, not in the checkbox to the left though. As an example, let me scroll up here. I'll start with my first step, which was open, and you can literally follow every step I've created, almost like a time lapse. I added the levels layer, modified it. I'll skip down to added a U saturation layer, modified it, added a new layer for dodging and burning until I go all the way down to the very bottom of the list. So, here are three history panel rules to avoid confusion. Rule number one, if you go back and forth between various history states and don't work on or change your image while doing so, all the history states that followed are saved. As an example, if I go up to, let's say, the fourth history state, all of the history states below are still available. They're just grayed out at the moment. Rule number two, if you go back to a previous history state, then change your image in any way, all the history states that follow are deleted. So if I go back to this level's history state, then modify my levels in any way, all of the history states that follow are gone. And I now start with new history states as I continue to work on the image. And rule number three, 
When you close your image in Photoshop, all of the current history states are lost. So if I close, then open this image again, as you can see, the history panel is a clean slate. This is one reason you work in adjustment layers, which we'll dig into in chapter 15 of the book. There is one place where there is a history of sorts that's saved, and it's great for informational purposes. If you previously activated the history log in General Preferences, as suggested in Chapter 3, a history log is created in your image's metadata, including what you did in the Adobe Camera Raw plugin, which by the way we'll delve into deeply in Section 4 of the book. So with an image open that you've previously worked on, such as this one, the history log can be accessed by going to File, File Info, and either Photoshop or History depending on your version. And as you can see, there's more information that you can shake a stick at. In the next video, we're going to find out that there's more information in the document window than meets the eye, as well as finding out things about the mouse cursor you might not have known.